should we wait? wait? It's going to be five minutes, so we could get a few words from Liam first while we wait for Chris. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's open up. Look, thank you, everyone. Another incredible night at the Manchester Arena. Thank you to Liam Smith for giving us two of the, the best nights that we've had. Um, incredible. I think uh, everyone knows that wasn't the Liam Smith we know. He had a really, really tough preparation, but he didn't want to let anyone down, not making any excuses. But I know how hard it's been. Um, he'll be gutted tonight. Um, but yeah, I want to say thank you from Boxham and the fans and the media for giving us two unbelievable nights. Um, questions for Liam? Hey, Liam. Uh, Radio Raheem. It didn't look like you could get off really at all tonight. Uh, what, why was that? Exactly what you just said, to be fair, Raheem. Um, I just I couldn't get off. Uh, I feel the whole, just the weight cuts just took a toll on me, I think, um, from the from the minute the back injury to the minute the rescheduled date. Um, it was like, it was a race against time. Um, you know, from our point of view, the deadline, Chris maybe would have walked away from the rematch. So it was always a race against time anyway. And I feel it just obviously played its part. As you could, you know, you didn't be, you don't, you didn't have to be a genius to see. I was flat from 40 seconds into the fight. You know what I mean? So I just couldn't, I, could, I just couldn't get going. I feel, I feel the weight killed me. Have you rolled your ankle later in the fight? Yeah, I rolled it in about around two or three, I think. Yeah, but like I say it was um, even the ankle part too. I've done that before in fights. Um, it was more just like being flat that killed me. When did uh, the injury? Oh, was, there, was there a recurring injury? The, the which mate? The injury you were talking about, was it just a, the back injury from before? Or? Yeah, no, the back, I mean from the, the way from the back, the back injury last time to when I got over the back injury, you know, I, I, I cut 42 pounds. Um, I feel it just played, it took a toll on my body in this last week. Neil, were you surprised that Chris Eubank, how did he associate with this fight? Did he no, it was just like I said it before. Um, that's what I like frustrate me because because it looked like Chris was great and I was like, Chris was exactly that started that fight exactly how we started the last fight, but then got more confident because he was not being countered and not being, like, you know, the counters I was trying to throw was miles away, too slow going over the top of his head. Um, yeah. So he got more confident. You know what I mean? And obviously. You can keep throwing, if nothing's coming back, you can throw and throw and throw. So that, that's why I feel Chris got, got confidence, because he knew nothing was really coming back. I couldn't really, I, I just didn't have any me to counter. So, you know, someone's not countering you, or throwing back, or even throwing when you throw. You get more confidence, so you let more and more shots go. But I feel he starts the fight exactly how we started the last one. No, definitely not an excuse for my ankle. Like I said, I've done my ankle before in, in, in fights, and definitely not an excuse, so don't, don't run with that one. And, um, no, as I, like I said before, just flat from the get go. Chris was sharp from the get go. Chris is night tonight. I, I won't make no excuses like blame, 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 and no ankles. Um, but yeah, it's 1 1 now, so we'll see what happens next. Liam, did you feel any pressure going into the fight with Chris? Pre a pressure is in what? What type of pressure? Um, you know, obviously you were the quote-unquote underdog going into the previous fight. You had a brilliant display in the last fight. No, the pressure was just, just like I said before, besides the, it was a rematch with Chris, the pressure was just the race against time to make weight. I feel, you know, a lot of people knew that. I feel Chris knew that, you know, he mentioned it to me on the way in. Um, but that, that's all, the only pressure was to, to, to basically make weight because, like I said before, it was like a bit of a race against time. That's the only pressure. Besides, regarding the fight, it was just a fight that I felt I had to win on the path towards the rest of my career. What do you want to do next, Liam? I know it's just happened, but what's your kind of... Yeah, obviously, I'll sit down. Obviously, I'll have to get over this and, and, and see what's next. Obviously, like I said before, it's 1-1. One, one. I think it doesn't take a genius to see how I performed in that fight. Um, so, you know, we'll we, we see what's next. Obviously, like I said before, it's 1-1. One, one. That doesn't settle nothing for me. Adjustments in the corner that they were telling you to try to make. Was there anything you were trying to do? I'm pretty sure you could hear. They were telling me everything, but when I when you know I couldn't push away or I couldn't push in, I didn't have the legs to do it. So, you know, it, like I said before, that's what is frustrating me a little bit because I've got Joseph, I've got Declan, I've got Paul screaming at me to do to do things, and I just I just couldn't do it. I was just like I, say, I was just flat. Now, Liam, you've been 
I'm not sure, I can't really put my finger on it now, but um, I think from the rescheduled date it was always it was always gonna be a push. Do you know what I mean? Forty two pounds, a lot of weight. Uh, Liam, if there is a rematch, how do you approach it differently? Is it something you do different in camp? Does it need to be at a different weight for you to make it? No, definitely. Look, look like I said, one, one sixty shouldn't really is, is not a struggle. It was just obviously coming back off the off the injury, and well, you know, I got back in camp. We had the press conference to announce the rematch. Then we done the gloves are off. You know, train home and I, and I, and I done me back the, the, the next day. So basically, the start of the last camp, I got injured and had another four or five weeks where I couldn't, I couldn't do nothing. So, you know, at the start of camp, you're starting camp quite heavy. I went heavier again. If that makes sense. What I would say is what Liam's been through in this camp. I've never seen anything like it. Um, I know he didn't want to let anyone down. We pushed and pushed the date. Chris was going to have to move on. It's no excuses, as I say, and, and Liam won't want to make any at all, but um, he did. He went through absolutely everything to be here tonight. Um, congrats. No, definitely not. That's what I mean. That, that, I'm, I'm just saying that on, on my part, that's my, that's my performance. I'm not taking nothing away. This is obviously Chris's night. You know, I, I had my night in January. I celebrated it well. This, I'm not taking nothing away from Chris this time, lad. This is his night. Where would you rank that performance, Chris, in your overall career tonight? Um, I'm happy with it. You know, I, I stuck to the game plan. You know, I box well, uh, pick my shots. Um, yeah, I did what I was supposed to do, what I said I was going to do. Did you feel that you grew in confidence throughout the fight? Oh, oh, oh. You know, he don't, he don't talk a lot, you know, he's real quiet. You come in, he's the type of fighter that comes in, ready to work. You got to come in, the trainer, you got to come in and be ready to work with you. He, he, he started right away, so he's all about business. He ain't about, like some of those guys just sit around the gym, want to talk, and want to take forever to put on their shoes, want to play games. I mean, he's not that type of fighter. He's that type of fighter to come in, get his work done, and get out of there. So the first couple of days it was like, well, I hope he liked me. But then after he start, you start seeing more him working, staying, sticking to the schedule. You know, listen to what the, what the coaches were saying to him in the gym and shit. I shit, I start getting happy. I said we might got something. But then after you start seeing the sparring and, and every sparring, every single sparring session that he did, he improved every single one. I brought in a tough kid that was tough as shit. And he Chris on his ass like a fucking baby. I was like, oh shit. And I, I warned him a couple of days. I was saying, man, this dude Lester Martinez is tough as fuck, dude. Now you you warned me the day <laughs> as I was walking into the room. <laughs> as I'm getting ready to the bell's about to start. I was like, oh, by the way, he's he's gonna he's gonna come on. He's gonna come on. I was like, oh, thanks for telling me. <laughs> But when I seen him, when I seen him with that performance, man, I was like, I was fucking happy as shit. I was happy. And, and one thing about trainers, you see fighters that coming off off a loss, and 
you know, the, their mindset is kind of different when they, once they go into the next fight. But Chris' mindset was always positive, positive, work hard, work hard, positive, positive, work hard, work hard. And what I've seen from other fighters, I did not see once from Chris. So that's why I was confident. I was kept telling everybody, watch, 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 watch. How did you feel getting that encouragement from Crawford prior to the fight? Um, yeah, listen, Crawford is, uh, is the man right now. So having him and his team supporting is, uh, you know, it's definitely, um, it's definitely good. How does winning the rematch compared to just winning the big fight, Chris? Uh, I had to fight some demons, you know. There was a lot of um, there was a lot of things to prove, you know. People saying I'm shot. People saying I'm, I don't have it anymore. I'm Chin's too gone. old. Chin punch resistance is gone. All these things I'm seeing, and um, you know, I, I had to I had to live with that for six six months. Um, knowing that it wasn't true, you know? um, so yeah, that was that was tough. You know, this is the first time I've ever been in a rematch before. Um, but you know, like I said, I I, uh, I enjoy new challenges. I rise to the occasion when I have to. Uh, William said his legs weren't there tonight. Could you tell in the beginning of the fight or at some point that he didn't have the same engine tonight that he had the first night? Um, I think after the first knockdown, I don't know, it was the third or the fourth round. I think after that, it was that kind of took the sails out, the the wind out of his sails, and then I, you know, I kind of dominated from there. Um, yeah. Was there anything in the game plan that wasn't working for you tonight? It seemed like everything you were trying was successful. Yeah, I mean, you know, box smart. You know, pick your shots. Um, you know, I, was, I was surprised. I I I, I hit him with a, a flurry of punches. I don't know what round it was. And uh, yeah, I was like, okay. I don't know. I threw. I, I probably punched for like 20, 20 seconds, and he was still standing. I was like, wow. Yeah, this guy is. Uh, this guy's tough. This is going to be a tough cookie to crack. I'm going to crack it, but this 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 boy is tough. So you had him on the ropes a couple times throwing a flurry of punches and he was able to slip them. What were you thinking at that time? Crafty old fox. You know? <laughs> Crafty. I said that before the fight. I know this guy, listen, he's a veteran. He's been there, he's, he's been through it, he's done it. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is what we do, you know? Well, um, what did you two, I know you went over to the corner, but what did you two talk about after that? Because the first one was obviously got a little bit tasty, but this has been a really respectful fight. And then, you were, you were yeah, no, I just said, listen, you know, you're a, you're a warrior. You know, he didn't give up. He didn't look for a way out like so many other fighters are doing these days. People are getting hurt. People are getting cut or dropped. And, and, and then they're, they're looking for the towel. The team's looking for the towel. or They're looking to just take a knee and listen, I don't want it anymore. It's like a, a guy could quit tonight. I forgot the guy's name. Uh, White Rhino. He just quit. And, you know, and it's like it's becoming normal now. Um, which is which is not good. So when when fighters like me and Liam get in the ring, and we have no quit in us, that's that's what boxing needs. Chris Connor, his immediate fight reaction, he had said that he was not impressed in the slightest. What would you what what, what would you say to him? Um, I don't know, man. Maybe the juice is still still affecting his mental. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you think a third fight's warranted? Um, listen, it, it is one-one. If if the fans want to see a third fight, you know me, I don't back down from a challenge. The whole title at 160 are going to be. Looks like they're going to be fragmented. Do you think the trilogy we can get? Because you're both quite ranked as well. Do you think you can get the French world title or world title for trilogy fight? Maybe that is up to uh, these gentlemen here. That's their job. Okay, I'll ask them then. <laughs> Listen, I think I know you all want to ask lots of questions about the next fights. I think that would be disrespectful to what we've seen this evening. We've spent a whole week here together in this wonderful city of Manchester talking about, you know, tonight. Now we've seen, you know, the flip side of what happened in, in, in January. I think we saw um, 
I promoted um, uh, some huge fights with Junior since 2017. Tonight, um, he was the best I've ever seen him. Uh, it was in every department. And Bomac has managed to put together all those those different strengths of his, and it was fantastic. At the same time, Liam, you know, what a what a fighter, what a warrior. Uh, it takes two to tango. Um, it was his night in January? You know, that's boxing. Boxing is an emotional sport. I don't think. I think it's I don't, tonight, and I'm not just saying this because it's quarter to past one. I want to get out with the about answering the difficult questions, but there is no plan right now. We're going to enjoy. Celebration, um, but Liam enjoyed his celebration in January. And um, Monday morning, 9 a.m., we'll, we'll get cracking. But right now, um, congratulations also to, to, to Liam for his, his part in all this. And, and like I said, we saw, I think, the best Chris Hubank Jr. Uh, that we've ever seen tonight. And uh, amazing, amazing media support all week and fantastic atmosphere as always in Manchester. Chris, would you also say that was the best you've ever met tonight? I felt good. You know, I didn't eat for a day and a half before, but um, aside from that, everything went everything went to plan. You know, uh, it, it was a good performance. I did what I was supposed to do. Listen to the corner, um, execute the game plan, and uh, yeah, happy. And there are a few times during the fight, like uh, between rounds, when you spoke to each other before going back to your corners. Can I ask what kind of things you said during the, to each other during the fight itself? Um, yeah, not right now. <laughs> Any other questions? Last one. Do you have a question? Ah. <laughs> one from you, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> So as long as it's like friendly. Are you all waiting for the question? Yeah, yeah well, of course. <laughs> you, ask, you want to ask a question, so here's your plan. Yeah. Delicious TV. Delicious TV. Come on, baby, you got the best questions. Right, no questions. It's 1.15, we're done. Thank you very much.